Hello, this is Shelly Agrank from Heartland Realty in DeSoto, Missouri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are listening for the first time, I do videos and try to make them kind of short and sweet for people um, on general topics that are um, in the real estate, um, things that are trendy right now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about what I call, and I got this actually from a loan officer that um, in, the, in the area, Hillsboro Homestar Financial um, from Corinne Fears. So I just want to give her a little prop on this video. But she gave me a document that I use with a lot of new buyers that are looking to get, you know, of course, pre-qualified to buy a home. And of course you have to do that in order to even put an offer in. So that's a whole nother video that I did about why it's so important to get pre-qualified. So today I wanna to go a little bit farther into what not to do after you get pre-qualified. Because keep in mind, a pre-qualification letter does not necessarily mean that your loan is closed and that it's done and no more questions are gonna be asked. It's just the beginning. Once you get a contract, your loan officer is then going to be asking for more information you know, about your credit report, your credit scores, um, any deposits into your account. And this is gonna be true throughout the process until we are actually closed. So the loan, the, once they look at your all of those issues to give you the pre-qualification, they're going to look again prior to close to make sure nothing has changed. So I kind of just wanna go through a short 10 commandment list of things not to do if you're in the process of buying a home, and especially if you were what I call on the bubble, you know, if you happen to be a perfect credit score, then these things probably don't necessarily apply to you. But anyone that is at all marginal, um, this is some, these are some things that you don't want to do because what you don't want to do is change when they gave you the pre-qualification. If you qualified, you don't want to change anything in your credit to make those things change or look worse. So you can always make them look better, but you don't want to make them look worse. So this is kind of a list of 10 commandments of things that you absolutely don't want to do after you have started the process of buying a home and you're in contract. These are things that would definitely change your credit score and your ability to be able to purchase a home. So I'm going to read off of this list again that Corinne Fears gave me. Um, so number one, and these, these things are things that people have done before. And so I just want to reiterate how, you know, these are things that you just don't want to do. And they're going to be questioned. You don't want to make any cash deposits into your account, um, of money that you can't explain. You know, in other words, it's, it can't be considered, you can't help you buy a house if it's money that you got from a yard sale or uh, believe it or not, I had somebody sell some cattle once and, and deposit cash, you know, a farmer into his account. And I'm not saying you can't do it, but that money cannot be, um, used to help you buy the house because that's not that's not like a paycheck that you're going to keep getting every month and that though and so those deposits of cash that you make during the process you're going to be asked where that money came from and you're going to have to be to be able to source that money um in my case of the of the farmer that sold some cattle you know we had to have a bill of sale from you know the cattle barn where um he sold the cattle so there are things that you're going to be asked to do if things show up in your account that are not normal and their cash deposits. So think about that. And it's really better not to do that if at all possible. Um, if you can help it, of course, sometimes you can't, but you know, you don't want to change jobs. You don't want to change anything about your income, even if you're going to make more money or at least talk to your loan officer before something, before you do something like that and say, look, I got another job opportunity. Um, sometimes if you change jobs, and you stay in the same field, it doesn't necessarily hurt you, but it, it can make a difference if you change fields um, altogether. And it's definitely a discussion, and these are things, I think of it kind of like your lawyer. You know, tell your loan officer everything. Don't, your loan officer is trying to help you get this loan closed, so don't hold anything back. If something like that comes up, always talk to your loan officer and find out how it's going to affect you and whether or not it's a good idea for you to do that right now. So if you change jobs or become self-employed, these are things that can definitely change um, your pre-qualification letter and change whether or not you can actually get closed. Um, don't buy a car or a truck 
or anything at all. You might end up loving it <laughs> if you do. So don't buy anything that it dra you know, don't make that you have to make monthly payments on. That's going to change the um when they pulled up your credit and they saw all of your liabilities, you don't want that to change. So don't go out and buy anything new of that nature at all. Uh, don't um, use your charge cards excessively. And especially if when they looked at those balances, when they gave you the pre-qualification, you don't want those balances to go higher. It's okay if they go lower, that's always okay. But you do not want those balances to go higher and you don't wanna miss any credit card payments. That's very, very important. Um, you don't want to spend any money that you have set aside for closing. So if you're thinking to yourself, look, they told me I needed 4000 for closing and I had that whenever I did the prequal, but I'm going to need to use some of that for, you know, whatever, and you do use it, then whatever they do, they'll do another check into your account prior to closing to see if you have the money to close. And that balance needs to be there. So, you, you know, I've had cases where people are like, you know, I had to use that, you know, 2,000 of the 4,000, but it's okay. My mother-in-law is going to give us the extra two grand whenever we need it to close. That's not okay. Okay. Do not change the money that you have set aside for closing. Have your mother-in-law give you the two grand for whatever else it was that you needed the money for. But don't take that money that you set aside for closing out of your account because that is definitely going to halt um, you being able to move forward and buy a house. Um, don't admit any liabilities to your loan officer. So, you know, what, uh, in other words, if something has changed at all in your income, if you now have to pay child support and you didn't before, for example, or anything has changed at all, those are all things you immediately think of your loan officer kind of like your attorney, you know, tell them everything and tell them everything as soon as you can so that you can figure out we, what we don't want is maybe 48 before 48 hours before closing is for us to pull up for your loan officer to pull up your credit score and your account and have any surprises. So make sure and tell them if something has changed since you did your loan application. Um, don't buy any furniture for the house. That's a popular one. I've had people go and buy furniture that, you know, you can do things, you know, seldom, I mean, not seldom, actually quite often, that'll say like 90 days, same as cash. So they open up a credit line, they get the furniture, they have, you know, 90 days to pay for it. So they're thinking that doesn't change anything. It does. It's still, it's a line of credit that you opened. And I have actually had to have people to return furniture in order to get that off of their credit so we could repull their credit without that on there. So even if it says 90 days, same as cash, they're still pulling your credit. They're still putting a lien against your credit. So do not do anything like that. An hour after we close, if you want to go to the furniture store and buy some furniture, <laughs> nobody cares at that point. You know, I mean, I'm not advising that you do that and get yourself in a bind, but I mean, you can do whatever you want after we close, but don't do that prior to close. Um, even new inquiries into your credit can make a difference. So even if you inquired about getting a new credit line for whatever reason, even an inquiry can make a difference. So be careful not to do that. Don't change your bank accounts, you know, for whatever reason. Don't decide, maybe you and your significant other have decided that, you know, you each have your money in different places and now you want to put it in one bank account. Don't do that in the middle of getting a loan um, closed. It's, you know, it makes everything a lot more complicated and will definitely mean a lot more headache and paperwork for everyone involved and could hinder your closing date. Do not co-sign a loan for anyone. I've had people not understand that when you co-sign a loan, you are also liable for that loan. What you're saying when you co-sign a loan is, you know, if that person doesn't pay, you will. So guess what? That's a hit on your credit. It's a liability against you. So these are all things that you might do that people have done before without even thinking about it and even thinking that it was going to affect the purchase of their home. But it most certainly does. And you most certainly want to be real careful what you do during that. After you, after you sign a contract, you should close in 30 to 45 days. It's pretty much the standard. So for those 30 to 45 days, don't do anything that's going to affect your credit in any way whatsoever. And if you have any questions about those things, always talk to your loan officer. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope this has been helpful. Have a great day. Thank you.